Hey, how's it going? Um, thank you for sending in so many questions lately. I know I've been a little bit slow in answering them, but we're going to try and get through as many of them as possible today, um, just to help you on your way with your, with your fitness plans and your food plans. Okay, so first question please. Does your 18-6 fitness diet work for building lean muscle? So yeah, so one of the things I'm known for is um, recommending intermittent fasting. It, it's, it's not something I recommend exclusively, it's just something that I sometimes use with people as a, as a useful tool. Um, they've got, you know, whoever's commenting on this, they've got the numbers the wrong way around. So it's not 18-6, it's actually 16-8 as, a, as a, sort of a, a general rule that I've kind of recommended, or even 15-9 uh, or 17-7. So it, it does vary a little bit. Um, you know, six hour eating windows is, is quite a short one. Um, um, which it, it, it can be used, but it, it's not it's not necessary. You know, it's, it's not essential for getting good results. You can get equally good results eating throughout a 12 hour you know 12 hour window. Um, where you know where where fasting does come in as a useful useful tool is controlling your calories. Um, it can be you know useful for reducing your total calories, um, but it can also actually work against it as well. So a lot of people, if they fast for too long, they get too hungry and then they overeat. In their, eat, in their eating window, so they'll actually consume more calories. So, you know, it, it can be a useful tool, but, it, but like I say, it isn't essential. Um, and for, for this specifically, it was for gaining lean muscle, was that right? Yeah. So for gaining lean muscle, it, it, you know, it can be a useful tool, absolutely, yeah, yeah, but it is not essential. Do you favor high rep, lower weights like GBT or lower reps, high weights now like five by five? And what are the benefits? Okay, cool, yeah. So, you know, rep ranges are something that get a lot of press, um, and people categorise different rep ranges for different different goals. I like all rep ranges, and I like rep, you know different rep ranges for different goals as well. So, like, um, you know. For example, five by five, fantastic for building strength, but I also like to use that while I'm cutting, as an example, because I think it's really good for muscle maintenance. Likewise, you know, GVT is fantastic for hypertrophy if you're eating in a, a big calorie surplus, but it can also be really good for fat loss because of the, the volume of the sessions is so high that, you know, it, that it requires a large amount of recovery in order to, um, you know, in order to recover from the session. So I, I wouldn't, you know, I, there, there isn't one type of rep range that I like or, and a type that I dislike. I like, you know, I I like you know reps from from two up to thirty, up to forty, up to fifty. I, I I like to to use as many tools as possible when I'm trying to get results, and doing different phases throughout the different fa you know uh, th through the different rep ranges can be really really effective. So for example, if you do a five by five block of strength work followed by GVT, chances are you'll be able to lift more for your GVT, which means you'll be able to get better hypertrophy. So they, it's, it's all about you know uh, pro you know progression, progressive overload, and working through different phases to increase your strength um, you know and, and the weights you're lifting for the higher reps as well um, so yeah I hope that helps thanks very much next up um, I'm 19 years old and I want to start eating healthy and going to the gym what would you recommend Okay, so if you want to start eating healthy and going to the gym, that's what I would recommend. Start eating healthy and going to the gym. That's the number one thing is to get started. Okay, so if it's something you're thinking about doing it, just go and do it. Get started. Um, and then secondary, you know, the sec secondly, I would say to educate yourself as much as possible so that you know that you're doing the right things. A lot of people, they'll start training at that kind of age and they'll spend years doing things that are not that effective. You know, they will see some results, but they're not going to see, they're not going to see great results because you know perhaps they're you know they're not tra the training intensity is not right they're not using progressive overload the calories are wrong for their goals you know so understand what you need to do to reach your goals um, so learn as much as you can about that so whether that be to read for um, you know for months educating yourself or just to seek the advice of an exercise professional who can then structure a plan either way you know get started learn your stuff and work hard at it is Vitago good for an endomorph? Okay, so and you know, so people people categorise uh, people into into three sections: so endomorphs, mesomorphs, and ectomorphs. And you know, different people, <coughs> excuse me, different people will um, sort of be put into different categories depending on their body type. What I would say is. Endomorphs typically require less carbohydrates, or they tolerate carbohydrates slightly less. But you know, being an endomorph is can be completely self-inflicted in the sense that it's someone that's just carrying too much uh, too much body fat. <coughs> so, in that situation, <coughs> getting in, in control of your carbohydrates 
getting in control of your insulin levels is really important. Um, for you know, f for achieving your fat loss goals. Um, so, Fitago is a carbohydrate, and it's used, you know, generally for recovery or for you know for energy during training. So, I wouldn't say that it's 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 something that an endomorph shouldn't have. Absolutely, you know, they they can have it. What they have to be aware of is that it's you know it's a carbohydrate source. There's there's calories in it. A lot of people think that, that you know they they kind of forget about the calories in their supplements. But you know if you're having uh, 50 grams of Vitargo per workout, then you, you you know you're going to be hitting like 200 calories from that, right? So you do have to be aware of the calories that that's adding. Um, but you, you know but you can use it certainly um, as, as long as it still fits in with the rest of your daily calories. Hope that helps. Would you recommend getting as lean as possible before trying to build muscle? I was overweight with high body fat and now I'm maybe down. Um, what's your best way of doing this as phases? Yeah, so you know, phasing this out is, is always the best way of doing it. So you'll do, you know, you will do different phases. I would say it, it, it's a very personal thing. It's, 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 you know, it's dependent on you know, how you feel, you know, with the, in the shape you're in, um, and also kind of what your body fat levels are like as well. So if your body fat levels are really high, still, then then you've got to focus on fat loss, and, you know, and, and keep focusing on fat loss until you get those, you know, that body fat down. What I, what I generally like to do is 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 keep people in a in a in a window of body fat throughout you know throughout a, um, a, a muscle building phase for example so what I would say is get yourself down into a, into a window where you're happy with your body fat levels first and then what you can do is add muscle from there but keeping it in check so that if your body fat levels creep up higher than you're comfortable with then you just drop the calories down and bring yourself back into that window that window will vary from person to person for me I like to keep it kind of like 12 15 percent you know around those numbers for myself so when i'm adding muscle if i start creeping too high above 15 percent I'll, 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 I'll you know i'll drop back a little bit and cut down a little bit again and, and likewise you know if i'm if, if i'm dropping below if i'm below 12 percent then i'm you know then i'm happy to go into a mass building phase if that's what i want to do so i would say you know, focus on what 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 it is you're looking to achieve, and uh, and you know, and then you can figure out the best way of getting there. I hope that helps. Um, I've been following your meal plan, but also incorporating intermittent fasting as it fits my lifestyle more. I tend to eat all my meals within a four-hour window, then fast for the rest. Plus, I do one 24-hour fast a week. I deliberately don't compensate that, which means I'm consuming less calories than on your plan. As I'm on a fat loss diet, will this really lead to muscle loss or can I continue as I am? Yeah, so I mean, that's all quite extreme stuff you're doing, and it, and if you're not if you're not um, if you're not sort of topping up on those calories from the meals you're missing, then you're not following my plan. Um, you know, you're, you're going to be missing out on a lot of calories, a lot of protein, which is going to be you know potentially is going to be a problem. Um, I would say, look, stick to the plan, stick to your to your correct calories, and if you do want to intermittent fast, then then stretch those those hours out because the thing is, you know, with with the fat loss training, you know, chances are if you're doing your cardio you're doing your weights and, and you're in a fasted you know fasted state your cortisol, cortisol levels can be elevated okay and this is going to have a, a negative impact on fat loss so what you need to do is you need to be using your food to help blunt your cortisol after training or you know at least near, kind of near near the times of training if possible okay so for example for myself now um, it's an intermittent fasting does does play a part in my um, in my in my eating schedule but it's not a, it's, it doesn't have to be strict right so I don't have to stick Stick to like a four-hour, six-hour eating window. What, what you know, what I tend to do is on days that it works, like if I can fit it in on a certain days, then I'll use it. If, if for example, I've got you know I've got meetings all day and I need to have breakfast, then I'll, I'll then I will do that. You know, so it's about fitting it in around your lifestyle, but it's also about you know not you, you know not not having to go so extreme to get results. Ultimately, you, things don't have to be extreme at all to get results. You can just be hitting your calorie deficit and you'll be absolutely fine. I hope that helps. Uh, what do you think is the optimal amount of weight to gain per month on a lean mass phase? I mean, the optimal amount is as much as your, you know, as your as your body can can manage within that time, you know, within that within that time essentially, and and that will vary massively depending on 
individuality okay so you know certain things you know a lot of things are going to play a part here so you know genetics are going to play a part age is going to play a part hormone function is going to play a part so there, there is no there, there is no answer to this as such um, what, what you have to focus on is maximizing what you've got in order to build muscle okay so you need to focus on your hormones you've got to focus on your calories your training these kind of things so that you're able to build muscle mass you know and, and I wouldn't worry about comparing it uh, to other people or anything along those lines. If you if you're doing the best that you can do, then it's job done, right? You know, there's there's nothing more than you can do that. So make sure your food's spot on, make sure your training's spot on, and and you're gonna you know you're gonna see great results. Okay, deload training essential, nice to have, or don't worry about it. Okay, yeah, so deloading de can be, um, is, is, is something that can be planned into training or it can be just added when you feel like you need it. So I, I, I like to, to use deloads um, as part of my training. So, um, you know, reducing uh, training volume, reducing the weights I'm lifting, those kind of things. And, uh, you know, I'll try and sort of program that kind of thing in every six weeks. Um, with a lot of my plans, I'll do, I'll do the same. So there'll be deload, there'll be deloads from the, from the heavier weights. Um, so yeah, I think, I think deloads are, are important for recovery they're important for long-term progression and they're also important for long-term like injury prevention as well so having having those periods of, of of the of the less you know less heavy heavy lifting can be can be really useful um, for you know for, for people that are focusing more on higher reps then I would say that the deload becomes slightly less important but it's still something that's worth considering yeah absolutely Okay, which is better, whey protein or impact whey protein? <clears throat> Okay, so protein powders. Um, a lot of talk about the different types, you know, when you need them and, and which ones are best for which circumstances. What I would say is the details of that kind of stuff are exaggerated, um, you know, so the, the difference between those types of protein is going to be very marginal. Um, you know, um, and wh when you say whey protein, I, I, you know, maybe a whey protein isolate or something along these lines. So there are there are proteins that are going to be slightly quicker absorbed, and slightly, and others that are going to be slightly slower absorbed. Ultimately, you know, if you're getting your protein level, you know, if you're getting your protein, you, you're getting your protein, and it's that's that's good that's good enough for me. So I wouldn't worry too much about whether you're using impact whey, casein, whey protein isolate pea protein, hemp protein, you know, it's, it's all good. Just, you know, focus on hitting your, um, your macros, essentially. Hope that helps. Uh, explain training around illness, i.e. a common cold. Take time off or train light? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I've had a, I had a pretty nasty cold last, <coughs> you can, I've still got a little bit of it here, right? So last week I, was, I, was, I had it, and I took sort of four or five days off training completely, and then I've eased back into it um, afterwards. You know, you got to think, you know, there's there's the big picture to look at, right? So having a few days off from training due to illness is not the end of the world. It's not going to, in five years' time, it's not even going to be, do you know what, it doesn't matter, right? So ultimately, I would say, you know, rest is important if you're, if you're under the weather, if you're not feeling right. Get yourself feeling good again, um, and and then you can start focusing on training. If, if you want to do some exercise while you're feeling unwell, then lower intensity stuff is, is going to be less less harmful than higher intensity stuff during your illness. Um, <coughs> so I would yeah I would I would say rest you know rest as much uh, rest as long as you feel you need to, um, and then ease yourself back in with some kind of lower intensity stuff, and then you can transition back into normal training once you're feeling better. Um, you know generally colds when they'll clear up after a week or two, so it's it's not going to have kind of crazy impact on your uh, your training. Just during that time, try and keep your food. Tight, you know, because obviously if you're not exercising so much, then you need to be making sure your calories are right. But you know, make sure you're eating enough to help with your recovery as well. Um, hope that helps. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for all the questions. Um, I hope you find the answers there helpful. And uh, please feel free to drop some more questions onto either my uh, blog, onto social media, and I'll do my best to get them answered for you.